Welcome to your YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the channel of the Almighty God in the lips of a pastor. The blessings await you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. The Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will come before you because of the mighty God. So look at your word now. Touch every life here in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen and amen. Today we shall be looking at abstractions and distractions on the way to exercising the power of God in you. Attractions and distractions on the way to exercising the power of God in you. But before then, Happy New Year. Happy 2024. And this topic is on the series, Answering the Call of the Almighty God, Part 1, Round 55. Before then, the Lord is very particular about your life, about what you do, about how you live your life, because at the end of everything, the issue of your eternity and destination, it all counts. He wants you to repent of your sins and dead works. The wearing of sexually seductive clothes, drug abuse and peddling, same-sex marriage, bribe-taking and corrupt practices, communal and city treasure looting, worldly music, financing and supporting of godly music, beauty pageant concert, transgender practice and all of that. Laughing at other people because they are aged and they are not married, the masturbation, the homosexuality, writing of hate-provoking letters, consumption of alcoholic beverages, going to sleep with other men because your husband can impregnate you, committing adultery with other women because your wife don't have the power to conceive, going to make babies with other women because you feel your wife has a challenge with impregnation. All of these things drops in other people's conversations with the intent to gossip what you have heard. Not with the intent of security, but with the intent to gossip what you have heard, irrespective of what you think that you have heard, correctly or incorrectly. Taking contents of these drugs to other people, living a double-faced life, pretentiously living differently at different places, and relating with other people with ulterior motives. Repent of these things now. Giving false reports about situations and people. Believing and acting on lies against the victims of such hate. Thereby causing love loss, destroying mutual habitation. Use of abusive words, looking down on someone because of God's help you have been fed with thinking that you have all this right in your own willful wrongdoings. Viewing and admiring television reality shows that expose nakedness of actors and actresses, unforgiveness, viewing and exposing your words and children to violent and sensual movies, and not confessing to your leader or spouse of your past lifestyle and all of that. Desiring your spouse's or leader's death with ulterior motive to take over, you repent of these things now. Secretly narrate your leader or spouse to other people of the same tribe or biological family so that he or she can be seen in bad light. Decision number to restitute the true paternity or maternity of children because of flimsy or righteous reasons. Loving the demonic personality in you and lying it to operate through you instead of constantly and genuinely seeking deliverance from this evil practice. Deliberate refusal to return a holy gesture, despising other people and wanting them to greet you first at all times. Always wanting your voice and opinions to be accepted by other people, failing to understand that whatever you have or whoever you are socially are all temporal, and failing to understand the temporality of life. Repent of these things now. Lying true complaints in order to give a true impression on the victim of hate, and all of these things. Seeking other people's debt in order to undo their investment, stealing other people's passes, known or known to them, messing up your social immorality with your married and married females around you. Repent of these things now. Lying, stealing, organ, human trafficking, twerking of all forms, online prostitution, physical prostitution, seed of discussing, slandering, worldly dressing, no like dressing, marital fidelity, fornication. Repent of these things now. Sugar daddy practice, sugar mommy practice, and all of these things, the witchcraft, the sorcery. Repent of all of these things. Even though you cannot even remember, the important thing the Lord wants you to just come to Him and say, Lord, have mercy upon me. I promise you not to go back to sins anymore. You give you the power of sonship and daughtership and start having a new lease of life. That is what life is all about. 
all the cleans and all the drives to get this, acquire this, and get this, and everything will end under the six feet. And your dying soul will ever stand, either in eternity in heaven or hell. Repent of these things now, since you have the gift of air in your nostril. And the Lord will help you and I. And today, like I said before, we are looking at the abstractions when you are trying to exercise the promise of God in your life. Or you are trying to exercise the power of God in your life. We are looking at the distractions when you are trying to exercise the power of God in your life. Or the promises of God in your life. They are the attractions and they are the distractions. Whenever you have the promise of God in your life, certain power gets into you. Because number one, if you are exposed to God's promise, it means that you have met a basic requirement to fulfilling that promise. So, a certain amount of power from above that enters you. So, when you are trying to exercise that kind of fit to ensuring that that promise comes to fruition, there are certain attractions and distractions, and the Lord will want us to look at them today. In 1 Samuel chapter 14, verse 4, and between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Boses, and the name of the other was Sene. Now, in 1 Samuel 14, verse 5, the forefront of one was situated northward over against Mishmash, and the other southward against Gibeah. You see, everything that the Bible, either in the Old Testament or the New Testament, is for a reason. So why would the Bible record about one sharp rock here and the other sharp rock here? And uh, why was that? And why would the Bible say one was pointing towards Mishmash and one was pointing towards Gibeah? How has that got to do with Jonathan and his Ammon bearer taking on the garrison of the Philistines, taking the war to them? How has that got to do with that? The Holy Spirit wishes to speak to us and ask you those questions. Point number one, missed feelings from the abstractions and distractions of the enemy of soul satisfaction. Point number two, moving fat from the attacks and determination of the enemy of soul satisfaction, missed feelings from the attractions and distractions of, of the enemy of your soul satisfaction. Because in the process of trying to get your soul satisfied, your body satisfied, your spirit man satisfied, there are missed feelings coming from the attractions and distractions. Sometimes we are confused. And sometimes this kind of hazy thought swam our minds to say, did the Lord not promise this and that? Why is it that there's this attraction and there's this distraction, missed feelings. And then two, we should also understand that there are some fixed facts that we should know when the attacks of the enemy of our soul's artificial want to invade our peace of mind. First point right away, missed feelings for the attractions and distractions of the enemy of our soul's satisfaction. Look at that verse again. Now, between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side, a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Boses, and the name of the other was Senes. Now, let's understand something. That in the process of carrying out the mandate of the Almighty God for your life, there are a number of distractions, positions to get you down. There are also a lot of legitimate attractions too, which may remove your focus from the Almighty God. It means that legitimate attractions, that is to say, your known attraction, that is to say, unseenful attraction, that is to say, the things you know, this one is your right. This one, of course, is it's fine. It could be your children. It could be your wife. It could be your husband. It could be your work. It could be those things you do normally. It could be your school. Very, very legitimate. They could also serve as distraction to fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And then you also see the distractions. This may not be your wife or your husband or your children, your school or your work. Not legitimate. It could be legitimate. They could also serve as distraction for you. Now look at it very clearly. That's on their way, as they were going to meet the guys on the Philistines, the two-man army, of course, Jonathan is Amon Bira, they saw the sharp rock on this side and the other side. But did they touch the sharp rock? No, they never did. They saw them, and the Bible recorded them. Now, the sharp rock could be two things. Look at it one way. It could serve as a weapon to them, so that, oh, can we just lure the Philistines to come here? and they will crush them here, let the sharp rock kill them or whatever, it could serve as that. It could be an advantage to them, and it could be a disadvantage to them. So when it's an advantage to them, we'll look at it from the perspective of attraction. When it is disadvantage, 
will look at it from the perspective of disadvantage when it is negative. It is disadvantage. If it is positive, it's an advantage. But the Bible did not record that Jonathan touched the sharp rock. The Amobia touched the sharp rock. They passed between them. We shall be looking at the deceitful attractions and the way out. In Mark chapter 4, verse 19, they are careful of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the loss of other things entering in shook the world and they become unfruitful. In Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13, what is just one another daily? Why it is called today? Lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Yes, of course, you look at the distraction and the attraction. Yes, the sharp rock, here yeah, another sharp rock, and they were going. And they didn't touch them, they didn't do nothing to them. And they could be advantage to them and disadvantage at the same time. Now you'll see. They went through that path and nothing happened to those sharp rock. And they still went ahead. They were focused. Their minds were set. What they wanted to do, and they still went to the Philistines uh, camp to do what they wanted to do. They were not carried away. They didn't stop for a while. Let's consider the advantage. Of, should we use it against these people? No. Now, let's a while. Let's be very careful, but they pass through. Now, look at it here. Now, the sharp rock will represent places, persons, and properties. Places, persons, and properties, because life evolves around these three things. The places, the persons, and the properties. Yes, of course. We are existing now because we are talking from a place. And whatever plan you have this month, this year, and after, you want to move from a place to another place. Or whatever thing you are talking about is about property. Whatever thing you are talking about is about persons because you must relate with other people. Life revolves and evolves. Places, persons, and properties. That's all about life. You went to school because you want to live in a good place so that uh, you can meet with wonderful people, so that you can have this kind of possession. So you see, life revolves and evolves. It changes. Revolves places, persons, and properties. The sharp rock represented the places, persons, and properties. But Jonathan and his armor bearer never spent time looking at those places, properties. They were focused on where they were going. What does that mean to us today as Christians in this life? That whatever thing the Lord has promised us, whichever direction that we have, we should not consider the places, persons, and properties. Because number one, the persons may give promises. The thoughts of those persons may give us hope. And the places too may give us promises. The thoughts and living in those places may give us hope. And the properties that we have may give us hope and may give us insight into other things. Don't look at the persons. Don't look at the places. Don't look at the properties. Look up to God. Look up to God. You may be working and you are very sure that in the end of the month you get this salary. You may be schooling and you are reaching this exam. I wrote this exam very well. I'm sure of this A distinction. Don't look at what you are legitimately having access to. Don't look at, hey, this is my wife. This is my husband. These are my children. They must do this at this part. Don't look at any of those, but look up to God. Even though the person tells you, you know what? I'll be seeing you by 1 p.m. today, and I'm sure I had this shake in my hand. I'm going to give you this one. Don't look at that promise. Keep looking up to God. Be focused. Paul said, Congrats, let us pray to understand the choice of the Almighty God on everything we do. Let us pray to obey the choice of the Almighty God for the person, the place, or property when we have already known it. It's key. Let's go to Second Green. I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, That my son, this day have I begotten thee. That's Psalm 2, verse 7. In Psalm chapter 4, verse 3. But know that the Lord has set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. That is also the second point, moving fast from the attacks and determination of the enemy of soul satisfaction. The forefront of the one was situated towards over against Mishmash, and the others southward over against Gibeah. First Samuel 14 verse 5. Now let's understand. Your legitimate choices may become disadvantaged collectively if you do not follow the leading of the Almighty God for your life. It is important that you understand the mind of the Almighty God on every matter. Now we understand that the sharp rock was an advantage. It was also a disadvantage. If you focus on the sharp rock, or your left or your right, may, may turn out to become a disadvantage and fight you back. That is the reason you don't look at the places, the persons, and the properties. Look up to God. 
if you may have this person in the back of your mind, this is the person I'm sure will give me this stuff. That may not be God's choice. Uh, this is the place I must get this one done. That may not be God's choice. This is the property. This is the assets. This is what I need to do to do this and achieve that. That may not be God's choice. If you look up to God, He will give you the rightful place, the rightful person, and the rightful property. He will give you the right place. Don't look at the sharp rock. Don't be attracted by the sharp rock. Don't be distracted too by the sharp rock. Look unto the Almighty God. He is the one that will give you what he needs to do because he owns everything. The focus like Jonathan did. The focus like, uh, like his Amobera did. And they had sweet, wonderful results. And that will be our experience this year. We will not put our heart on any process. We will not put our heart on any property. We will not put our heart on any person. We will not put our heart on any place. Our heart will be solely on God. Even though we are hearing about promises, we are hearing about this, and we are given this one, we are given, we are given open checks, we are given this and given the other. All our attention will be on the Almighty God, and that's the way to success this year for us. Let's look at the deceitful distraction and the way out. The deceitful distraction and the way out. Look at 1 Samuel 13, verse 2. Saul chose him 3,000 men of his trip, wherefore 2,000 were with Saul, a Mi'kmaq and a Mount Bethel, and a thousand with, with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin. And the rest of the people is sent every month to his tent. If you understand that before this time that King Saul, when they were preparing to fight the Philistines, they mapped out Mikbash in the month of Bethel. They mapped out Gibeah in the same pathway now. Because one sharp rock was pointing to Mishmash and the other was pointing towards Gibeah. The same pathway, that same pathway, they unleashed terror, they unleashed mayhem on the Philistines and they discomfited or defeated them. That's in part where you see the two sharp rocks waiting. Now, we understand, each sharp rock was pointed to Mishmash and Gibeah. These places were the camps of King Saul and Jonathan before they attacked the Philistines earlier. Somehow, rock was also symbolic of a potent revenge, if not well managed. Let's be very careful with people, careful with the places and the properties, because they could serve as dangerous instrument back to us, if not well managed. Imagine if it was the Philistines that got to that place first. Imagine them knowing about the sharp rock, the sharp nation of the rock. They would have peace maybe against the Israelites. The sharp rock, apart from being an advantage to Jonathan and Samuel Bira, also represented the disadvantage to them. If they were not careful, they would have been harmed by the sharp edges of the rocks. Now you understand that as they were passing, they were very careful. They didn't touch the sharp rock because the sharp rock would have torn their clothes or torn whatever thing we were putting on. They were careful and they passed through. As you deal with people in places, deal with people or use whatever you have this year, the Lord is saying, we should be very careful. The focus is not on those things. I can do this. I know when given this opportunity, I will do this. I can do that. I, I, know, I know that one plus one will always give me two. Let your confidence not be in that thing. Let your confidence be in the Almighty God. The Bible did not record that Jonathan and the Amon Berah were affected or influenced by the position on the sharp rock on each side of their way. Once again, just as in the case of the advantageous implication of the sharp rock, they did not look in the way of the negative or disadvantaged implication of the position of the sharp rock. Jonathan and his Amon Berah exerted their physical and spiritual energies on following the Almighty God rather than giving attention to the distraction and the attraction the world presented to them. Let Christians live without the legitimate attractions and distraction the world offers to them. Are you like Jonathan and his armor bearer? That's the question. In 2 Corinthians 7 verse 10, For godly sorrow, walk in repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world, walk in death. In 2 Corinthians 12 verse 21, Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you, and that I shall be well many, which have sinned already and have not repented of the uncleanness and the fornication and lasciviousness which they have committed. Now the Lord is saying, are you like Jonathan and his Amon Bira? Because it was the power of God, the Spirit of God in Jonathan that moved him. And let's go there. Let's go to the Christ location. Let's go there. Let's take the walk there. And over 600 people never noticed and they left. And they saw the sharp rock, both left and right. They never stood once to look at the advantage of the sharp rock or the disadvantage. They were the attractions. The rocks were the attractions. The rocks were the distractions. They were focused on the Almighty God. They passed through those sharp rocks in between them and they achieved what they wanted to do. The Almighty God wants you to be focused on Him and not on anyone or anything. 
given all favorable conclusions that you are, you are, you are setting up your salary, you are the fulfillment of a promise, the right access to a property, and citizenship rights to certain privileges. It is important that you take your heart from those rights and put it on the Almighty God for truly successful outcomes. It will come true for you. It will come true for me. It will come true for us. To meet his preconditions, it is very key that we repent of all those things that we mentioned before. And the Lord will touch us this year as we put our focus, as we put our heart, oh, one to God. As this message came, and as I looked at it, I said, this one is for me. It's not for any other person. That I should take my heart off every expectation that uh, through this one, this one will happen, and through that it will happen. No, I should take my heart off from all of them, and then put my confidence and trust in the Almighty God. It is that we'll put our trust in the Almighty God, that He Himself will make our dreams and aspirations to come through for us. And the prayer points for you and I are, let us pray to remove our minds from the sources of livelihood and put our minds on the Almighty God. Let us pray to have the Almighty God in the centers of all that we do. So let's answer point number one. Do not give your attention to any legitimate attraction. Focus on the Almighty God. Despite knowing that you may end from your work, don't put your mind on the any. Put your mind on the Almighty God. So let's answer point number two. Do not give your attention to any distraction. Focus on the Almighty God. Despite being assured of a certain promise, put your mind on the Almighty God. So let's answer point number three. Give your all to the Almighty God. Knowing fully well that you have always done a particular activity with an assured outcome. Put your mind on the Almighty God anyway. So let's answer point number four. Give your attention to the Almighty God only. So let's answer point number five. Let the Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be your personal, spiritual, and physical gogoma. Yes. Let the Almighty God, let the Almighty God through our Lord Jesus Christ be your spiritual and personal Google map. Because you see, each time you want to know it, the setting location, and you search up a Google map. Let it show me the way. Let us say, yeah, okay, driver goes this way, drive this way, turn the steering this way, and then you're going, you're very certain. And the Google map tells you, that's the end of the journey. Let the Almighty God be the one that will direct, that will keep, that will help us in Jesus' name. Question, are you persistently being attracted or distracted by the sharp rock on your way to fulfilling your God-given destiny? In this life, in this life, are you, are you, are you being attracted by the sharp rock? Are you being distracted by the sharp rock in fulfilling that promise, in holding on to God for that promise? Are you being attracted or distracted in this life? Uh, if you are being attracted or distracted, don't be. Focus your life on the Almighty God, and the Lord will help you and I. The Lord will touch us this year because this year is potent of wonderful promises. This month is potent of wonderful promises. And all the promises that the Lord has given to us will come to fruition in Jesus' name. Now, wherever you are right now, listen to the sound of my voice. I need you to talk to God now. Reconcile with God. Ask God to forgive you your sins. Open your mouth and say, Lord, have mercy upon my life. Have mercy upon my soul. Have mercy upon me right now. And He will have mercy upon you. He will have mercy upon you. He will have mercy upon you. Ask him to have mercy upon your life. It will surely have mercy upon you. And as you're asking for his mercy, as you're asking for his mercy, promise him too. You won't go back to your wayward, evil life before and that you start, you chart a new course in the Lord Jesus Christ from now henceforth. He will listen to you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, in Jesus' name, Every individual that has prayed that prayer of salvation, of repentance, you write your name in the book of life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, the Lord has told us about the sharp rock. Hey, that though, we have been deceived by the sharp rock on our way of fulfilling our destiny. We'll look at the attraction and uh, all our attention, 98% of our attention will be on the attraction. We'll look at the distraction, 98% will be on the distraction. And so, the delays, the fades, everything to the carpet, nothing has happened. And now the Lord has opened our eyes that even the attractions, our hearts should not be there. Even the distraction, our hearts should not be there. All the sharp rocks on the way of our success will take off our heart. Now, you see, maybe you prayed and you fasted. Or you heard a voice and you heard, had a revelation. 
Maybe you prayed and you say, I am so sure based on this my prayer. Don't base it on your prayer. Base it on faith in the Almighty God. Because I have done this for God now, because I have done this for God now, because of this, God will do it. Mm -mm. Don't base, base it on the Almighty God, on the mercy of the Almighty God. Don't let any place or person or property or whatever thing we have done uh, be our motivating faith to achieving or receiving for the Almighty God. We will not look at the sharp rock. We will not meditate on the sharp rock on the left or on the right. We will put our heart on the Almighty God. Indeed, we will find satisfaction. Open your mouth now and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, this month and this year, Lord, my heart will be set hard on you. Not on what or not on my ability, not on the places, not on people, not on places, not on, on persons, not on the properties, not on anything, but will be set hard on you. So that all your promises that you have given to me, all that I'm expecting that you will do for me, will come to fruition. Will come to fruition. Once the devil knows that our attention is based on this, he can read the mind. Oh, the can oh, oh okay. He or she is thinking about this now. He or she is thinking about that now. So God, can't you see? He doesn't even trust in you. He she doesn't even trust in you. He's thinking about this, he's thinking about that outcome and the other outcome. And then at the end of the day, we are left stranded. And now the Lord has opened the secret that indeed we should not, even when somebody says, I don't worry, in the next few minutes right now, you'll be getting this now. We will not put our heart on that promise. We will put our heart still on the Almighty God. Even though we have heard a man of God has prayed and we have joined faith with you, your faith is not in that prayer, but your faith is in the Almighty God. And that is it. If our heart, our life is aligned to doing this every day, every time, every minute, will see the fruition of the, the promise of God in our lives. Open your mouth now and say, Lord, this month and this year, I will put my heart on you. My heart on you. My heart on you and nothing else. And nothing else. No other rock but the solid rock. No other rock but the solid rock. All the jagged rock that want to destroy us, we don't look at them. But the rock of salvation will look at the rock of salvation. The solid rock who is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not the sharp rock, but on the solid rock, the solid rock of the Almighty God, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, Lord, we decree and declare all your promises for us hitherto, before now, last year that were not fulfilled, and the ones that are coming this year that we are expecting. We we'll pray because we have revealed the secrets unto us, that we should look up to you, that we shouldn't look at the sharp rock on the on other side or the passage of our way. Lord, declare that all your promises, because we are focusing our attention on you now, will come to materialization today in Jesus' name. Lord, we'll see the experience, palpable experience, tangible experience. We'll experience in Jesus' name. From now henceforth, Lord, all our attention, our hearts will focus on you, not on any other thing. In Jesus' name, we'll look at the sharp rocks. We'll look at the solid rock of salvation. We'll look at the jagged rock on our left hand side or our left, right hand side. We'll look up to you in Jesus' name. Lord, on you through our Lord Jesus Christ, our health is secured. On you through our Lord Jesus Christ, our fulfillment is secured. On you through our Lord Jesus Christ, everything we ever desire will come unto us in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you because I know that you have answered this year. You have answered now because we begin to see the manifestation of your power. Oh Lord, roving, touching every life here and those across the airwaves in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have done it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the Select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.